Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Monday, October 26th, 2020. I pray that as we spend this time together in God's word today, God will use his word to strengthen our faith in him and increase our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our savior. Today, we are remembering three hymn writers um, who suffered a lot during their lives and yet were able to write hymns that were filled with hope and thanksgiving and, and are really a great encouragement to us as well, especially as we continue to struggle through the pandemic that we're going through right now. It's good to be reminded of the um, faithful lives of these three hymn writers. Their names were Philip Nikolai, Johann Herrmann, and Paul Gerhardt. Philip Nikolai, who lived from 1556 until 1608, was a pastor in Germany during the Great Plague which took the lives of 1,300 of his parishioners during a six month period. In addition to his heroic pastoral ministry during that time of stress and sorrow, he wrote the texts for Wake Awake for Night is Flying and O Morning, Morning Star, How Fair and Bright, known respectively as the King and Queen of Lutheran chorales. Johann Herrmann, who lived from 1585 until 1647, was also a German pastor and suffered from poor health as well as from the ravages of the Thirty Years' War, which lasted from 1618 until 1648. His hymn texts are noted for their tenderness and depth of feeling. Paul Gerhardt, who lived from 1607 until 1676, was another Lutheran pastor who endured the horrors of the Thirty Years' War. By 1668, he had lost his pastoral position in Berlin for refusing to compromise his Lutheran convictions and endured the death of four of his five children and of his wife. He nevertheless managed to write 133 hymns, all of which reflect his firm faith. Along with Martin Luther, he is regarded as one of Lutheranism's finest hymn writers. Our Psalm for today is Psalm 12. Help Lord, for no faithful one remains. The loyal have disappeared from the human race. They lie to one another. They speak with flattering lips and deceptive hearts. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaks boastfully. They say, through our tongues we have power. Our lips are our own. Who can be our master? Because of the devastation of the needy and the groaning of the poor, I will now rise up, says the Lord. I will provide safety for the one who longs for it. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined in an earthen furnace, purified seven times. You, Lord, will guard us. You will protect us from this generation forever. The wicked prowl all around, and what is worthless is exalted by the human race. Yesterday we heard the curses that the Lord would bring upon the people of Israel if they refused to remain faithful to him. Today we're going to hear about the blessings that the Lord promised to give them when they remain faithful to him. Now if you faithfully obey the Lord your God and are careful to follow all his commands I am giving you today, the Lord your God will put you far above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will come and overtake you because you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Your offspring will be blessed, and your land's produce, and the offspring of your livestock, including the young of your herds and the newborn of your flocks. Your basket and kneading bowl will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will cause the enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. They will march out against you from one direction, but flee from you in seven directions. The Lord will grant you a blessing on your barns and on everything you do. He will bless you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he swore to you, if you obey the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Then all the peoples of the earth will see that you bear the Lord's name. And they will stand in awe of you. The Lord will make you prosper abundantly with offspring, the offspring of your livestock and your land's produce in the land the Lord swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open for you his abundant storehouse, the sky, 
to give your land rain in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You will only move upward and never downward if you listen to the Lord your God's commands I am giving you today and are careful to follow them. Do not turn aside to the right or the left from all the things I am commanding you today, and do not follow other gods to worship them. But if you do not obey the Lord your God by carefully following all his commands and statutes I am giving you today, all these curses will come and overtake you. You will be cursed in the city and cursed in the country. Your basket and kneading bowl will be cursed. Your offspring will be cursed and your land's produce, the young of your herds and the newborn of your flocks. You will be cursed when you come in and cursed when you go out. The Lord will send against you curses, confusion, and rebuke in everything you do until you are destroyed and quickly perish because of the wickedness of your actions in abandoning me. The Lord will make pestilence cling to you until he has exterminated you from the land you are entering to possess. The Lord will afflict you with wasting disease, fever, inflammation, burning heat, drought, blight, and mildew. These will pursue you until you perish. We continue reading in Matthew's Gospel today in chapter 18, hearing about who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and also our responsibility to call our brother who has sinned against us to repentance and when he repents to forgive him. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, so who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a small child and had him stand among them. Truly, I tell you, he said, unless you turn and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child, this one is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one child like this in my name welcomes me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to fall away, it would be better for him if a heavy millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses. For offenses will inevitably come. But woe to that person by whom the offense comes. If your hand or your foot causes you to fall, it, fall away, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to fall away, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hellfire. See to it that you don't despise one of these little ones, because I tell you that in heaven their angels continually view the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If someone has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, won't he leave the 99 on the hillside and go and search for the stray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over that sheep more than over the 99 that did not go astray. In the same way, it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones perish. If your brother sins against you, go tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won your brother. But if he won't listen, take one or two others with you, so that by the testimony of two or three witnesses, every fact may be established. If he doesn't pay attention to them, tell the church. If he doesn't pay attention even to the church, let him be like a Gentile and a tax collector to you. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree about any matter that you pray for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there among them. We just heard Jesus encourage us to forgive one another. In our writing for today from Francis Pieper, Francis Pieper we're going to hear about how um, hear a little bit more about how God has given to us that privilege and that right to be able to forgive sins on behalf of Christ himself. False doctrine of the Reformed and other sects, that a preacher does not have power to forgive sins in the place of God, 
but it should only proclaim the forgiveness of sins in general. Against this, the Lutheran Church teaches according to God's word. The preacher can and should, at Christ's command and in Christ's place, forgive the sins of him who desires this forgiveness. And the Christian should consider that his sins are thereby forgiven before God in heaven. For the absolution is not the voice of the man who is present, but the word of God who here forgives the sin. It is chiefly for the sake of this comforting absolution that we Lutherans retain private confession, in exchange for which Luther would not accept a thousand worlds. Our hymn today is a stanza from the hymn, Lord God, to thee we give all praise. But watchful is the angel band that follows Christ on every hand to guard his people where they go and break the counsel of the foe. And we pray. Almighty God, the Apostle Paul taught us to praise you in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. We thank you this day for those who have given to your church great hymns, especially your servants Philip Nikolai, Johann Herrmann, and Paul Gerhardt. May your church never lack hymn writers who through their words and music give you praise. Fill us with the desire to praise and thank you for your great goodness, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you all so much for spending this time in God's word with me today. God richly bless your day, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.